Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a very interesting rational equation. I think this problem was suggested by one of my viewers a while ago. I didn't get a chance to do it. I can't remember if you do. If you did suggest this problem, please let me know in the comment section. If I can find it, I will add it to the description and maybe make a comment about it. Anyways, so here's what we have. 1 over x squared minus 1 over x plus 1 quantity squared equals 1, and we're going to be solving for x values, both real and complex. And we're also going to be taking a look at the graph, which kind of explains the intersection points of two functions. All right, ready, set, go. So we're going to go ahead and first multiply both sides by something. Well, let me tell you, when I saw this problem first, I thought about something in the middle of x and x plus 1, which is x plus 1 half. So I thought about setting z equals x plus 1 half, which means uh, replacing x with z minus 1 half. That would create z minus 1 half squared here. And, oops, that's a minus sign. And that would give us z plus 1 half squared here. And then hopefully we can go somewhere from here. Their difference is going to be, I think, just z, right? It's supposed to be 4ab. And then, actually, it's going to be 2z, I think. And then anyways, at the bottom, we're going to get their product. And is this, is this going to get anywhere? I don't know. I haven't tried it. But looks like that might be an option. You can test it out. Please let me know if you do. Now, here's what we're going to do. As I said earlier, we're going to multiply both sides by something. What should I multiply by? I'm going to multiply by this. You'll see in a little bit why that's helpful. But if you start off with this and multiply both sides by x plus 1 squared, which is the second denominator, you're going to get something cool. When you distribute this, you're going to get x plus 1 squared divided by x squared minus 1 equals x plus 1 squared. It's kind of tempting to put this as a, a quotient squared, but I'm not going to do it for obvious reasons. You'll see in a little bit how this is going to simplify. So now let's go ahead and simplify this. Uh, I'm going to keep the left hand side pretty much intact for a while. And now if you expand this, you're going to get x squared plus 2x plus 1 from x plus 1 squared. Make sense? Now I want to bring the 2x and the 1 over here to the left hand side and leave the x squared on the right hand side. Make sense? So we're going to do the following x plus 1 squared over x squared minus 1 minus 2x minus 1 equals x squared. And this gives us x plus 1 squared over x squared minus 2x minus 2 equals x squared. Now you'll see in a little bit after factoring out something this is going to look much better. So, we're going to go ahead and factor out partially a negative 2 here, and that's going to give us x plus 1, which is good because now x plus 1 is a common factor. I know these are not polynomials, I mean at least the first one, but we can still factor out something. So we're kind of dealing with a rational equation. It's okay to keep things that way, but I'm going to go ahead and take out x plus 1, and inside, I'm going to have x plus 1 divided by x squared, because I took one of these. And then minus 2, because I took the x plus 1 from here. And then that equals x squared. Now guess what we're going to do? We're not going to distribute. We're not going to make a common denominator. That would just defeat the purpose. But we're going to divide both sides by x plus 1. Because this is going to go underneath here. And look at that. Look at that. Focus on that expression right now. So we're going to get x plus 1 over x squared minus 2 equals x squared divided by x plus 1. By the way, I forgot to say there, there are two conditions we have to follow. x equals 0, not 0, and x does not equal negative 1. So x can't take those values. That's why we're allowed to divide both sides by x plus 1, under those conditions at least, right? Now take a good look at this. Hopefully you see what I see. I'm going to call this something, and you can do the opposite. doesn't matter. No big deal. But I'm going to go ahead and call this something. How about z? This is a good variable, right? So if you call that z, what is this going to become? The reciprocal of z. Yes. So we can call this 1 over z. 
And we get a very simple equation. Probably, I think this is from Russian Math Olympiads. I can't remember the year, but it must be one of those because I've seen this in a book. By the way, many years ago, I remember seeing this problem. But anyways. So, you see, the person, whoever came up with this idea, they probably started off with this. And then they replace Z with something crazy. And then, you see, you can do this. Like, you can start with this, replace Z with something co more complicated, like a rational expression, and you'll get a nice equation. Of course, reversing the process is painful because you're doing reverse engineering in some sense. And as you know, it's difficult. Or maybe you don't know how it is. But anyways, so let's multiply everything by Z. Z does not equal 0. We know that already. Z squared minus 2Z equals 1. Z is not equal to 1, by the way. This is not a perfect square. But we can go ahead and add 1 to both sides if you want. And turn this into Z minus 1 squared equals 2. And then we can take the square roots, which is basically the quadratic formula, right? Z minus 1 is going to be plus minus root 2. After adding 1 to both sides, we're going to get the two solutions. So they're going to be rational. That's why finding the solution directly is painful. By the way, we didn't talk about another method, which would normally be the first method, but we can talk about it if you want. Anyways, z values are the following, but we're not looking for z, we're looking for x. So the relationship is as follows. Let's go ahead and write the z values here, 1 plus minus root 2. Erase this part so we can kind of take it from here. Hopefully you got this idea after the substitution, solving for z is super duper easy. I hope you feel the same way, but let us know anytime in the comment section if you have any questions. I know I have a great audience that loves answering questions. If I don't, uh, you know, you'll get an answer. So let's go ahead and set this equal to one of the values of c. Let's start with this one. And now we're gonna we're gonna get x plus one equals 1 plus root 2 times x squared, which is the coefficient of x squared. Let's turn this into a full quadratic. And this quadratic we do know has real solutions because a and c have opposite signs. That's what happens um, when a quadratic equation has that property. But anyways, from here we can find the x values. I'm also going to show you the result from Wolfram well, Alpha in a little bit because my solution is going to be a little messy. But anyways, negative b plus minus the square root of b squared 1 minus 4ac, but it's just going to be that. If you simplify it under the radical, you're going to get 5 plus 4 root 2. That's easy to do, by the way. Divide by 2 times 1 plus root 2. So normally you would multiply by the conjugate and simplify this, but that's going to make it really messy. Leave it like that. That's perfectly fine. Now let's go ahead and set the z equal to the 1 minus root 2, which is the conjugate of this expression. And then from here, you're going to get 1 minus root 2 as the coefficient of x squared minus x minus 1 equals 0, just like before. But this time, the coefficient of x squared is negative. This is also negative, so they don't have opposite signs. That doesn't mean there are no real solutions, but guess what? There are no real solutions. Because when you find the discriminant, 1 plus minus, you're going to get 5 minus 4 root 2. It's going to be the conjugate. By the way, have you noticed? The discriminant is even the conjugate of whatever. And everything will be conjugated. But notice that 5 is less than 4 root 2. Why? Because 5 squared is 25. And 4 root 2 squared is 16 times 2, which is 32. So the difference is negative. OK? Make sense? All right. Cool. So we can write this as 1 plus minus the square root of 4 root 2 minus 5, which is now positive. Multiply by i, our imaginary number, and this is going to be the solution. Those are complex. The other ones are real, so it's balanced, right? We got four solutions. Awesome. Let's go ahead and take a look at some results from from alpha. But first, the graph of these two functions. What are they? Horizontal line y equals 1 and the rational function, which you only see part of it, but that's the only intersection that we have. And here's the real solutions, the real deal. Yes, they kind of look much better than mine. Anyways, this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.